The trays that we have worked on till now have focused on the units one through nine. With the games, colors, and number symbol association, children should now be very familiar with the unit bars one through nine. When they are proficient with these numbers, then they are ready for the addition subtraction tray. Here the learning process begins with addition mastery and is based on the premise that every unit number wants to be a 10. Thus the name of the game, Want to be a 10. With this approach, Mortensen Math establishes a crucial philosophy for addition mastery. Addition facts mastery will come through a child's imagination, not memorization. What normally takes a long, long time to memorize becomes a short journey through imagination and application for every child. Here's how it works. The numbers one through nine we call units. The 10 bar we call a 10. The premise that we work from is that all units want to be a 10. Nine wants to be a 10. Now what does nine need to be a 10? Nine needs a one. Eight wants to be a 10. What does eight need to be a 10? Eight needs a two, and so on. Many different games can now spin off of this want to be a 10 format, and these will serve as preparation for the beginning of Edition Facts Mastery. Here's one of them. Put all the unit bars into a pile and have one person choose a bar and let the other children match it up to a bar that makes it a 10. A guessing game can be created from children all choosing a unit bar and then hiding it. One child can pick a bar and then guess who has that bar that makes it a 10. With this game, they also improve memory as children learn who has what piece as they are shown during the game. Another game, using a bag. The bars can be placed inside it for children to reach in and draw out one at a time. The piece that is brought out needs another one to make it a 10. The children can verbalize the answer or reach in and try to pull out the bar that they need without looking, or in other words, by feel. Build a 10 wall for yet another game. One child picks two bars to make a 10. Then another child chooses two different bars to make a 10 and stacks them on top of the first. The children come up with as many ways as possible to make a 10 wall without knocking the wall down. Children are not limited to these games alone, and in fact will probably come up with many of their own games based on these. Encourage them in this, for they are learning to explore and discover math in their own play environment. Ultimately, this is all leading to the first encounter with addition mastery, and here is where the child learns to conceptualize addition. Place the addition subtraction tray in front of you with the tin bar in the second slot in the lower left corner of the tray. Find the flashcard that shows the numerals five plus eight. Place a five bar in the slot directly below the 10 bar. And then place an eight bar next to the five in the same slot. Now, to begin the process, we ask the children the questions that we have already discussed. What does five want to be? Five wants to be a what? Five wants to be a 10. What does five need to be a 10? Five needs another five to be a 10. But what does five have? Five has an eight. Will that make five a 10? No. Is five looking for an eight? No. Does five need an eight? No. What does five want? Five wants a five. But let's see, can we make an eight with a five in it? Yes, we can. We can make an eight with a five and a three. Now replace the eight bar with a five and a three bar next to the five in the lower tray. Now, what does five want to be? A 10. What will make five a 10? Another five. Do we have another five in our eight? Yes. Separate the five from the three and move the five to connect up with the other five, leaving the three on the right side of the tray. Now we have one 10 and three units, making the symbol one three or 13. Turn the card over and verify the symbol for five plus eight as 13. Now that might've gone by a little fast, so let's try another one. Again with the kid in front of you, 
Find the flash card that shows the numerals six plus seven. Place a six bar in the slot directly below the 10 bar, and then place a seven bar next to the six in the same tray. To begin the process, we ask the children the questions that we have already discussed. What does six want to be? Six wants to be a what? A 10. What does six need to be a 10? Six needs a four to be a 10. What does six have? <laughs> six has a seven. Will that make six a 10? No. Is six looking for a seven? No. Does six need a seven? No. What does six want? Six wants a four. But let's see, can we make a seven with a four in it? Well, yes, we can. We can make a seven with a four and a three. Now replace the seven bar with a four and a three bar next to the six bar in the lower tray. Now what does six want to be? A 10. What will make six a 10? A four. Do we have a four in our seven? Yes. Take the four from the three and move the four over to connect up with the six, leaving three on the right side of the tray. What we have now is one 10 and three units, making the symbol one three or 13. Turn the card over and verify the symbol for seven plus six as 13. Subtraction mastery skills are equally as easy with the Mortensen Math Explore and Discover concept. Subtraction of units, or numbers less than 10, is accomplished by the number associations the children have already learned. Let's try one. Give a child a nine bar. Now tell him that you owe me five from your nine. Can you give me five out of your nine? No. Can you make a nine with a five in it? Yes, with a five and a four. Now can you give me five out of your nine? Yes, and when you give me a five, what do you have left? A four. Nine minus five equals four. Give a child a six bar. Tell him that you owe me three from your six. Can you give me three out of your six? No. Can you make a six with a three in it? Well, yes, with a three and a three. Now can you give me a three out of your new six? Yes. And when you give me a three, what do you have left? Three. Six minus three equals three. In numbers larger than 10, we can use the addition subtraction tray again and find the flash card that shows 15 minus eight. Next to the 10 bar in the lower left corner of the tray, place a five bar, showing one 10 and five or 15. Now below the five bar, place an eight bar. Now ask the question, can we take eight out of our five? No. So we have to take eight out of our 10. In order to do that, we need to make a new 10 using an eight and a what? An eight and a two bar. Slide the eight in the lower slot over to the left and directly under the 10 bar, and then add a two bar to make it a 10. Now take the five down from the upper tray to the lower tray and ask the child if we still have 15. Yes. Now can we take out our eight? Yes, we can. Remove the eight and slide the remaining bars to the far left. What do we have remaining? a two bar and a five bar, which makes seven. Check the back of the card, 15 minus eight equals seven. Let's try another one. Again with the tray in front of you, find the flash card that shows 12 minus five. Next to the 10 bar at the lower left corner of the tray, place a two bar showing one 10 and two or 12. Below the two bar, place a five bar. Now ask the child, can we take five out of our two? No. So we have to take five out of our 10. In order to do that, we will need to make a new 10 using a five and another five bar. Slide the five in the lower slot over to the left and directly under the 10 bar. 
and then add a 5 bar to make it a 10. Now move the 2 bar from the upper slot to the lower slot and ask, do we still have a 12? Yes. Now can we take out our 5? Yes. Remove the 5 and slide the remaining bars to the far left. What do we have remaining? A 2 bar and a 5 bar, which makes a 7. Check the back of the card. 12 minus 5 equals 7. With the Mortensen Math visualization concept, children can begin adding and subtracting in large numbers at the same time they are working with small ones. We've introduced the unit bars and the 10. Your kid also comes with red 100 squares. Locate those now, and be sure to choose the squares with the unit grids on them. The smooth face squares are provided to work with algebra, which will be covered in advanced video lessons. Now, place them in front of the child with 100 square on the left, one 10 block in the center, and one unit to the right. This is the way that we would normally look at numbers, hundreds, tens, and ones. Now ask the child to get three of the hundreds, four of the tens, and two of the units. Having done this, the child has visualized 342. Now ask them to get another hundred, three tens, and one unit, and place them in order above the first row of numbers. Now tell the child that adding them is putting them all together and counting them. Have the child count the hundreds pile first, then the tens pile, and then the units. They will tell you there are four hundreds, five tens, and three units. The number would read four, five, three, or 453. Subtraction works in the same way. Ask the child to get out four of the hundreds, three of the tens, and five of the units. Ask that they then take away from the pile one of the hundreds, two of the tens, and three of the units. What is left in the pile is the answer three hundreds, one ten, and two units. Three, one, two, or three hundred and twelve. The children are already working in addition and subtraction in large numbers. In advanced stages, multiplication and division are possible. Here's a problem. Thirteen children brought twelve eggs each for an Easter egg hunt at school. How many eggs did they bring in altogether? By counting the units, the children will see that the hundred square has 10 rows of 10. By adding two of the tens blocks to the hundred square, we now have 12 in each row, and we have 10 rows. Now the 12 in each row can represent the 12 eggs, and we have 10 children represented by 10 rows. But we need 13 children represented, so we add three more 12s to our rows for a total of 13 rows of 12. How many eggs did they bring all together? Simply separate the pieces and count them. How many hundreds do we have? One. How many tens do we have? Five. How many units do we have? Six. In numerical sequence, we have one, five, six, or 156 eggs. Large number multiplication is conceptualized simply to a child. This is true also of division. A child went to the hen house and collected 132 eggs and brought them back to the house to clean them. Then the eggs were put into containers. 12 eggs were put into each container. How many containers were used? Have the child get out 100, three of the tens, and two units to represent the 132 eggs. Now, how many 12s can we get out of this? the child will probably pull out a 10 and two units. There is 12. Now when asked if they can get any more out, they would say no, but wait. If we put the two tens next to the 100 square, we now have 10 rows of 12. Have the child count them. Then if we add the 10 and two units to the pile, 
we now have 11 rows of 12. So how many containers of 12 eggs were there? 11.